When Jonas realized he'd been standing in the doorway with his mouth agape, he quickly proceeded into the room and closed the door behind him. His worst fears were about to be realized. He knew that at age 18 he was headed for the altar. Sit, his father commanded. Jonas sat in a chair as far from the father and daughter as he could get. Mr. Hayes is here to see you do the right thing by his stepdaughter, Minnie Kreider, who just happens to be increasing after being with you several nights while I was gone. Jonas's stomach felt like marbles had begun to tumble around in it. Yes, sir, he mumbled. He looked at the woman's stepfather. I'm sorry, sir. As you should be, Mr. Hayes snapped. Minnie is a good girl, he pointed his finger at Jonas. You took advantage of my stepdaughter and you'll marry her for it, and quickly before the condition becomes noticeable. Jonas knew Minnie had a reputation for being quite generous with her favors. Minnie worked at the Bull's Head Saloon. She was a pretty girl with fair skin and ginger-colored hair. He wanted to ask Mr. Hayes how she'd known he was the father, since he knew he wasn't the only one who'd been with her, but thought it best to keep silent. It could just as well be his fault as anyone's. My apologies, Mr. Hayes, George said. My son will marry Minnie on Saturday. He has a house being built as we speak, and they can live here until it's finished. Mr. Hayes and Minnie stood to leave, and Jonas looked at her and just slightly shook his head to let her know he was not happy. Sit back down, George Armstrong yelled as his son tried to escape upstairs once the guests had left. I'm not through with you yet. Jonas trudged back to his father's office and slumped into a seat. What in the world happened while I was gone? he demanded. Jonas rolled his eyes. Isn't it evident? Listen, I wasn't the only one who was with her, Boyd Egan and— No, you listen, his father yelled. He pounded his fist on the desk. I don't care about your friends. I'm your father, and I never planned on you being married at age 18, George Armstrong sighed. This can't end well. I wasn't the only one who— You were intimate with that woman, George rubbed his forehead. And God knows how many others that I don't know about. When a man goes that far with a woman, he is responsible for the results. How could you have been so careless and negligent? Jonas remained silent. Thank God Aunt Bertha left you and Caleb enough money to give you a good start in life, because your life will start on Saturday. As soon as the house you're building is finished, you will take your wife there to live. Do you understand? Try to make a decent marriage out of this. You owe that much to the child, at least. Just promise me you won't tell anyone, including Minnie, how much money you have in the bank. I instructed you and Caleb to build modest homes and save the rest of the money, because I don't want either of you marrying fortune hunters. Though you will soon be married under these circumstances, keep it quiet, at least until we see how things go. Who knows what could happen if she knew the size of your inheritance?'